Hello everybody, it's um, well, whatever you want to call me, I call myself Dr. Autism Guy mostly, but um, I'm back again with another rambling video, and this time the topic is Sans versus Viltramites. I think by now everybody is um, pretty familiar with these two races, because um, with Invincible coming out um, the past few years, and um, with the new season coming up, I believe everybody is familiar with the concept of Viltramites. And um, if you're on my channel, you should be familiar with Saiyans, obviously, from Dragon Ball Z. So, the purpose of this rambling video is to compare the two, both narratively and um, mostly power scaling-wise. So, to start, I will go over the narrative, um, the narrative discussion. So, basically... Um, I think it's pretty clear that the um, the Viltramites, at the very least, took um, some in inspiration from um, Dragon Ball Z with the idea of Viltramites and how they, because, um, you know, they're all about, you know, fighting, battle, strength over everything, and how they send out Viltramites to um, conquer planets, singular ones, kind of like the how the Saiyans would send out Bane, mm, sorry. Kind of like how Sans would send out babies to, um, you know, conquer planets when they got old enough. Fun fact, that's actually why um, Sans are really, really small for a long time and then sprout up. It's because it's like a sort of infiltration technique, I guess, in their genetics. They're meant to be small for a really long time and then they rapidly get bigger. That's the reason why Goten and Trunks have been small for so long and only now have just gotten bigger. But basically, they, um, they took similar concept and like kind of did their own thing with it. Because um, I believe wholeheartedly that Viltramites are nowhere near as shysty and villainous as the Saiyans were. At least before Toriyama tried to so hard to soften them up. But if you look at the Saiyans and what Saiyans in the early Dragon Ball Z said, such as um, Raditz, you can see they were downright cold-blooded. Even when it comes to um, family affairs, Raditz wasn't afraid to kill his brother, his nephew, for even just resisting to join his team for what he felt like was um, not acting like how a Saiyan should. And he was just willing to kill him over that. And um, he seemingly implied that's the way of the Saiyans, how they wouldn't care about family if they went against them. And there's just a quote from Turles about how Saiyans would kill their fathers. And that's just the way how it goes. And um, they even assign like rankings to the Saiyans and stuff. Like if you're a low class, you just get sent off. And they don't really care about you. You're just a low class warrior. And that's what they use to define you for the rest of your life. Like what Vegeta says to his um, famous speech to Goku. How he was an elite warrior and Goku was a low class. And how he would never overcome that. From my understanding of Invincible, I don't think that the Viltramites are as um, evil as the Saiyans were. In fact, I believe, um, I don't know the time frame for this, but I believe when they spent time on Earth that they actually got converted into good guys and stuff. As opposed to Saiyans, I don't... <laughs> In fact, when Nappa was um, Nappa one time, when they were on that alien planet talking with Vegeta, he said that when he was going to Earth, like, he would just be clapping cheeks to make the Saiyan race again. I don't think they would actually, like, fall in love or grow to care about them. Because at their core, Saiyans are uniquely evil and selfish beings. Um, like Goku said, they were evil and they died for it because Frieza killed them, you know. Kind of live by the sword, die by the sword type thing. But, um, yeah. So, um, that's pretty much my thoughts on the comparison of the two, um, narratively, off the top of my head. Now, um, I'm going to get into more power scaling, wise, what I think of the comparison between the two. In terms of power, um, I do believe that Saiyans take this pretty easily. Um, I believe, at the very least... The very, very least, all Saiyans should be above um, moon level. Obviously, since they should all scale above Master Roshi and his moon bus feet in Dragon Ball. 
But um, I also do believe that most Saiyans should be like, like I believe this more so than moon level. I believe that all, um, pretty much all Saiyans should be planet level. Because there is a statement by King Piccolo that he could destroy the world if he wanted to. And you can take this how you want if he was going to do it over time or whatever. But I think more so it is like in like maybe a single shot. Like maybe not like vaporize it as became commonplace in later Dragon Ball. But he would like just have enough energy to break his um, gravitational binding energy GBE. As opposed to, you know, going like city by city to destroy everything. And then obviously the Saiyans would scale far, far above this as um, Piccolo Jr., his son, was completely unable to do anything to Raditz. Despite the huge increase from, you know, his father and the time skip. In fact, even in the, um, the filler um, where the Z fighters go up to train with Kami. And they go into the one room that transports them back in time to fight the Saiyans, who I believe should be average Saiyan level. They just get completely destroyed and they can't even hurt them at all. So I think that should be indicative of what the average Saiyan is like in terms of power. Now as for the average Viltrumites um, power, they should not be anywhere close to, um, to a Saiyan level of power, even if you grant them the moon level feat. Just being at moon level, I mean. Um, three of some of the strongest Viltrumites in history were only able to planet bust um, planet Viltrum with three of them, obviously. But they also needed a, um, a, ma a, ray, a, sorry, a strong ray gun to break the planet um, in um, tandem with them. And like... <laughs> like the old dude, he literally says, um, he literally says that if they get, they don't get the timing right, that they'll die on the impact. So like, I've been told that with all this context and, um, taken into account that the feat is like, shoot, like country level. And like, those are just, like some of the strongest hitters in the verse. And definitely the strongest hitters for the Viltrumites um, besides Thrag, who shouldn't be that much above them. So, for as far as like AP and striking strength goes, that's like a done deal. But as far as um, as speed, you, it's like you could argue that Viltrumites have better speed because um, Sands should be like. Roughly around faster than light, not that much above it, not that much below it, but um, they should not be into the massively faster than light, um, at least for the average sands. Maybe you can argue that for like high tier sands, like Vegeta, King Vegeta, Bardock, maybe, but for the regular plain Jane old sands, they should not be at that level, but regardless. The feats where Viltrumites fly into the space and to like different galaxies and stuff. Those are like space warps, which is like a weird ability to like, I don't remember the specifics of it. It's like time warping kind of. And like it's only due to that ability that they're able to go that fast. So I believe even considering that, that they shouldn't be able to tag Saiyans really. Like I think a lot of their feats are like in the sonic levels. Without the space warps. But um. I've heard arguments that this Viltrumite should scale to the space warps. Due to a character named Alan the Alien. But I'm not that much brushed up upon it. So I'm not going to be really taking that into account for this video. So um yeah. I think if you take that into account. I believe Sans were pretty capable of beating Viltrumites. Um, pretty handily. I say really the only advantage that Viltrumites have is their, like, um, their adaptability. But even then, I don't think, um, like for their strength increase, I don't think their adaptability is as good as the Saiyans, like as far as power. But I do think it's superior in terms of adapting to environments and that type of thing. 
because um as we see pretty infamously in super a saiyan can grow far 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 stronger even in the course of a single battle so even if the viltrumites were at the same level as the saiyans the saiyans would get stronger over the course of the battle and just like completely start overwhelming them and then you can take into account like the strongest Saiyans versus the strongest Viltramites, which is a complete stomp. Even if you discount like Goku and Vegeta going on to the later arcs, um, even if you just take into account the first time we see them, like people like King Vegeta, like wiping <laughs> three planets off by literally waving his hand, and Kid Vegeta is stronger than him, and then of course Adult Vegeta is way stronger than that, and then Goku can fight that like. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's not even fair at that point. So, yeah, that pretty much is about it for this video. Um, Again, this is all off the top of my dome. It's a rambling video. So, of course, there might be um, a lot of inaccuracies, but I uh, um, asked for, I'm um, sorry, but as for now, from what I know from both series, this is my opinion, obviously. And um, I do believe that's how the matchup, if you can call it that, would go. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I think I'm going to do one of these rambling videos every week. Just to like um, be consistent with that. I might do them every morning at the, and Monday, but um, we'll see. But um, keep an eye out for my next video, which will be an edited video. And, um, yeah, talk to you guys later. See ya.